Hi everyone, I just want to say I hope you're all doing well and your families are doing well and you're all adjusting to the online schooling. The topic I'm going to be talking about is how socioeconomic statuses can affect a student and their success and what can be done to try and help motivate students. With embracing diversity, we take into account socioeconomic statuses. In looking through school systems, we can easily recognize that students of low socioeconomic statuses face more adversity in their academic careers and they face the feeling of not belonging and not having a support system and just the feeling that they're out of the loop and they also have shown lower test scores on standardized testing and lower rates of continuing onto a higher education and in short these feelings can be altered to help the success of low-income students it doesn't matter the factors that cause these feelings it matters that we attempt to minimize them and teachers need to realize that they can change their activities and implement them in a different way that it makes a more inclusive classroom for all students. And academic experience is very often different for each individual student and teachers need to make sure that they are including everybody. And this experience can be altered by many characteristics including school district, location, type of school, private, public, but one feature that often goes unnoticed is the experience that students coming from low-income families receive. Children of parents with little to no educational background, incomes below the poverty level, low-skilled occupations, they typically face a lot more adversity throughout their academic career compared to the families of high-status kids. And 50% of students with lower income also tend to fall behind in reading and math levels by the time they even reach fourth grade. And this has been proven by numerous studies by the American Sociological Association. And students of lower socioeconomic status also have an 8.7 high school dropout rate compared to the students of higher income that have a 2% dropout rate, which is huge. And those students who emerged from low income families, it begins in grade school and goes all the way up to college where they often lack that feeling of be, of belonging and having that support system and they report a lower sense of well-being. Many schools often look down upon students of low statuses which often discourages students from continuing to do well and many programs are set in place to help those students in that moment but it doesn't they don't teach you how to discover the root of the problem and how to fix it on your own so we need to go back and look at the factors that could be affecting this child and could be affecting their way of learning and really teach them how to deal with what's going on either at home or on the bus or in the hallways. And we often hear the phrase, be where your feet are, be present, be in the moment. And the underlying problem needs to be fixed before you can excel or move on in your academic career. We know that students often have these feelings of not belonging, but using social and educational psychology techniques it will aid teachers and administrators in minimizing the feelings and thoughts students have. Popular issues that psychologists typically study include stereotypes, prejudice, and discrimination, and often students are being looked down upon. And that really discourages them from continuing on trying to find better or trying to better themselves and trying to be more successful when this whole time the higher students have just been pushing them down. And students that come from families with higher incomes tend to stigmatize those that come from lower ones because they really don't get it and it's never really talked about in schools. And this is referring to the cognitive branch of social psychology creating stereotypes. Stereotyping is holding negative beliefs about an individual based on what they go through, their relationships, and it's also related to a theory called social identity. The social identity theory about how people strive to better themselves. Some argue that self-esteem stems from personal identities, and others argue that self-esteem comes from the nature element, meaning the environment around you. But the theory believes that both your personal identity and your social identity defines you. Your person identity commences from personal achievements, and your social identity involves group achievements, along with favoritism towards in-groups and degrading of those outgroups. And in personal experience, when I was a child, some of my personal achievements came from sports and athletics and club teams. But nowadays, those are so expensive 
it takes a decent amount of money to be able to have your child participate in a team sport and it may not be for a priority for families with low income and it's a big life experience that many students miss out on and they lack that personal achievement that stems from it but not only is your personal identity tough to see what the status is but obtaining your social status is ambitious and the students that are stigmatized or that stigmatize lower income students that's the the in group is the students who are the higher income students and the higher households and the out group is everybody else the lower income students that come from lower households and the in group is often favoritized and that's a tendency to support administrators support the in group a lot and the out group gets discriminated and when your peers look down upon you it's hard to perform and it's possibly you're you don't think you're capable enough but if an additional outside source maybe provides motivation as well, it's great having teachers and administrators alleviate the groups, but it would be most ideal to motivate students and minimize these feelings. But it's not always practical. But maybe receiving positive comments and positive feedback or support from peers, parents, friends, etc., that could really help a student realize that they can receive help if they need it. So just to end this, I really think that it's something we can all take part in fixing, and I hope you all enjoyed this, and hope to see you next semester. My question for you guys is, what do you think teachers, administrators, peers, etc., can do to help minimize the stigmatism against lower socioeconomic statuses?